asking me to come and share in your harvest this morning. It's very nice to be here with you. Once again, all sorts of fruit and vegetables and, and lovely things. Now see here, right in the middle of the table, there's a lovely loaf of bread. In fact, it's, it's been done out with a lovely picture on it of five loaves and two small fishes. Now I imagine many of you have already eaten some bread, perhaps rolls, or perhaps toast today. Hands up if you've already had bread or rolls or toast today. I have. I have to put my hand up as well. Yes, I have. Right, lovely, thank you for your hands down. That's quite a lot of you who already had bread. And I expect more of you will have bread sometime today before the day comes to an end. But have you ever thought where your bread comes from? It's there at home in the house. But where does your mum get the bread from? Oh, I, want to, uh, I want to see hands, please. I just want to see hands. From the shop. Right, would you like to come out? So you can remember, right now, from the shop. Right. It's from a shop. We've got to have a shop assistant, haven't we? Your mum or your dad goes to the shop and gets the bread with the help of the shop assistant in the shop. Now, where does the shop get the bread from? From the baker. Right, good lad, out you come. <laughs> Yeast 
is the thing that the baker puts in the bread to make the bread rise, otherwise it would just stay all flat. Yeah. Rise at all. That's right. It would look like the bread that we have. So we've got a shop assistant, we've got a baker who bakes the bread with flour. Yeah. Where does the baker get the flour from? Yeah. <laughs> oh, somewhere. We haven't got to the farmer quite yet. Where does he get his flour from? From the mill. Right, have you come? And he needs a, a big white coat because as he's grinding up the flour from corn, it's so very, very dusty. He needs a white coat to help to keep the dust off his clothes. So we've got our miller who grinds up the, the corn or the wheat to make it into flour that goes to the baker that goes to the shop. Ah. How, how does the bread get from the millers to the bakers and from the bakery to the shop? How does it get there? Yeah. Who's going to, who's going to do it though? In a van, right. Come on then. Combine harvesters. That's right. 
Lovely, would you like to go along at the end? And we need people to actually put the pieces together to make it up. Right, would you like to go and stand at the end as well? So, your mum goes to the shop, and the shop assistant, whoops, it's all right, it does that. I know that as well. Can I take the old chapter that? That's really a bale of hay. Right, so the shop assistant, the people in the shop get the bread from the baker, and the baker gets the flour from the mill, and the mill, and the baker uses the lorry, and a lorry driver or van driver. And the miller gets the, the, the corn or the wheat from the farm. And the farmer relies on the people who design combine harvesters and hay balers and the people who make them up so that he can get into his fields. But the farmer also depends on somebody else. What else does the farmer need if his corn and his wheat are going to grow? Now we've got the tractor and we've got all the machinery. What else does he need if it's going to grow? He needs the seeds, that's right. And he plants the seeds out, and then what does he need? Now, I just want hands, please. Now, what does he need to make the seeds grow? Yes, what does he need? Yeah. He needs water and... Water and no. no? Well, he's got water, you'll have mud. He needs water and no? Quiet. Quiet. No, I'm only going to ask people who are quiet with their hands up. He needs the water to make his seed grow and he needs the sun. That's right. Now, we've got something a bit more difficult here to understand, haven't we? But we know it's God who gives us the sun and the rain. It's God who puts the life into the tiny seed to make it grow. Now, we can't see God, but we know he's there, and we know he loves us. And we use this special sign of a cross to remind us just how much God loves us. So wherever you see that sign, then you can remember God's love for us. So would you like to go and join the other end of the line? So, next time you eat a slice of bread at home, or a bit of toast, or a roll, or something like that, just remember, all the people who have been needed to bring that simple, ordinary loaf of bread into your house. Your mum's needed a shop assistant, and the, the uh, baker, the miller, and the people who drive lorries, the farmer, on his farm, who uses the people who think up machinery and the people who make machinery, and God, who gives the sun and the rain and the life in the seed to make it grow. So next time you eat a piece of bread, remember and say a thank you to all the people who work hard so that you can have bread on your table. And say thank you to God as well for all the good things that you enjoy. And you know, there is one way that we say thank you to God and that we realise how much God loves us. And that is when we learn to love other people too. And it's good to know that 
the things of your harvest are going out to elderly people so that they can share the joy of harvest and know that there are people who love them and care about them as well. Right, thank you very much for those who have helped. Come on now. That's that. Thank you.
say the words after me. All right, so put your hands together, close your eyes. We thank you, Father God, we thank you, Father God, for all the joy of harvest, for all the joy of harvest. We thank you, we thank you, for all the people, for all the people, who work very hard, who work very hard, to make sure we have enough to eat, to make sure we have enough to eat. And we thank you, Father God, that when you made this world, you made sure there would always be food for us to eat, people to care for us, and your love to be with us. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for singing so nicely. I know everybody has enjoyed it. Thank you, parents, once again, I must say, for all of this. I just wish you could be there when the children knock on the door today and see the smiles on the Basically, of the old soldiers. It's lovely that the young ones giving something to the very elderly. It really is quite touching and they really do appreciate it. And it's only possible by your generosity. It's not always easy for you to give, and we're always asking, but you always come up with it. I don't know how, but your mother's parents, you always come up with everything, and we do appreciate it. And on behalf of the old folks, I Thank you. 